It's game week and Titans All Access is back for the 2024 season. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Bet MGM studio. Our first Titans All Access of 2024 spotlights the new. A new center in Lloyd Cushenberry, a new slot receiver in Tyler Boyd, a new left tackle in rookie J.C. Latham, and even though Will Levis isn't new, he is new as the Titans' full-time starting quarterback. The most obvious piece that is new to the 2024 Titans is head coach Brian Callahan. Brian was hired on January 24th, so it feels as though he's been in place for a while. But this weekend in Chicago, it gets totally real as he coaches his first regular season game. Each week, Amy and I get a chance to sit down with Brian Callahan to get his thoughts on a variety of subjects. We call it Callie's Corner, and it's presented by SeatGeek. Obviously, I have a lot of football stuff to talk about, but before we get to the kickoff week stuff, I want to rewind just a hair because I want to talk to you about last week's An Evening with the Titans dinner event. Sure. And at that event, you made the decision to announce the captains for this team at that event, which I think surprised a lot of people. What was your thinking behind doing that? wanted to make it special for the guys being announced. We called Joey in and uh, our equipment head of equipment and I said hey can you get these first of all do you have any C patches the uh, captain's patch yes the patch and can you get it on these jerseys in you know <laughs> <laughs> like three hours and I know Jeff was really excited to have the C patch on his jersey and in a moment he was you could see how excited he was and, and Morgan had said that he hadn't uh, he just he goes I didn't think it would mean that much he goes I couldn't stop looking at it a lot of new on the Chicago Bears offense Keenan Allen at wide receiver, DeAndre Swift at, in the running back position, obviously Caleb Williams, the rookie quarterback, Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator. Uh, is it hard to get a handle on what Chicago's offense is going to look like with all the new? Probably no harder than it is for them to get a handle on us with all the new. I think it's very similar in that regard that um, they got new coaching, new players, uh, quite a few, and um, some unknowns and a, and a rookie quarterback. And so... We're going to find out. Obviously, we know what Keaton Allen can do and Swift. And you watch Caleb Williams as a college player, you know what he's capable of. And you see his preseason tape and you see the things that you saw when he was in college. And so all of those things will will be – they'll be dealing with the same things that we are. There's some unknown. There's some new – not a ton of continuity across the board, but certain spots have some. Switching to offense, what is Will Levis' main challenge this Sunday against Chicago's secondary? He's going to have to be smart with the ball. You know, the, the name of the game usually in this first week or two of the season is is how well you take care of the football, how much you minimize your own mistakes. You know what I mean? There's a there's an element of we just need to do our jobs first and need to worry about what we can do and not necessarily worry as much about them because – that's where sometimes the mistakes happen. You try to do too much, and, and that's what wins and loses these opening couple of games. It's probably the first three weeks of the season is how well do you just execute what you're good at, and, and that's what I'm going to ask of Will is just do the things he's good at. For more of our conversation with Brian Callahan, we invite you to enjoy the OTP. You can watch the OTP on the Titans' YouTube channel or – at TennesseeTitans.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the OTP wherever you get your podcasts. There is only one official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP. Stay tuned. More Titans All Access right after this. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Will Levis has spent the offseason on the move, learning the new offense, training, working on fundamentals, traveling, and yes, even golfing. Will enjoys the golf course, but he also sees it as a place where he can bond with different teammates in a relaxed setting away from work. Will Levis invited Mike Keith on one of his late summer golf outings. Now, Mike doesn't play, but he was eager to talk with Will about the last seven months, and riding in a golf cart gave them just that chance. It started as something that I took as a challenge and I think naturally, like athletically especially, things came pretty natural to me and this was not one of those things. So it was one of those things I really had to work to get halfway decent at and I'm still not halfway decent. So just trying to work and obviously the opportunity to come out here and and just spend time with the guys so you can't beat it. The locker room talk consists of a lot of golf, which is cool and we're in there putting in the locker room and 
talking about where we want to play next and when everyone's available to play. Uh, it's definitely a hot topic of conversation. Oh, my oh, goodness. Guy, whoa, 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 whoa. That's unbelievable, dude. So what's the most important thing you've gotten done in the offseason? Just getting to know this offense and this team. I think just when you get a new staff and a new playbook, it's all a lot of new. And it's a lot of, it could be frustrating, like going back and learning things for the first time again. But, you know, it's a privilege and it's something that you got to take head on. And I feel like all of us have done a good job of undertaking that responsibility and coming to work every day ready. What's the most important non-football thing you've gotten done this offseason? Oof. Uh, spending time with family. You know, I just got back from my sister's graduation party. She's moving to Nashville, so I'm excited to have her for, for her grad school. And just got to see a whole lot of people that I love and enjoy spending time with, so it's always important. Walk it in, walk it in. Oh, come on! Hey, you do anything different physically this offseason than you have before, working anything differently? Uh, I'd say running, just more focused on running and getting my, my legs back and, and feeling to how I like them. And uh, just big emphasis on, you know, the plyo stuff and speed work, speed mechanic stuff. Um, you know, I'm running and feeling really good right now, which has been great. So do you listen to any of the people who say Titans aren't going to be any good this year? Uh, yeah, I don't listen to really anybody that has anything to say about our team. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, if anything, you know, for the guys that can use that as motivation, I think that'll be good for them to try to prove some people wrong. But I think that, you know, regardless of what people say, good or bad about us, can't let that affect how we come to work. So um, they don't, it's all it's all cool. They can all say whatever they want, um, and we're not gonna, you know, let it change how we how we come and do our jobs. Come on, y'all, keep it up. Go, family on three. One, two, three. Family. He's he's giving it a shot. If he can get over the hill. Here it comes, picking up pace down the hill. Look at it, rolling toward the cup, magically. <laughs> Dang. Sure. Boom. So you're going back to Soldier Field. Yeah. Where you played your first game. How different is that going to be in terms of what your mindset is? Uh, definitely going to be less nervous. <laughs> That'll be nice. Um, you know, a little bit more on the, on the line as a, obviously a regular season game, playing in Soldier Field. Fans are going to be hyped, obviously, first game, you know, new quarterback for them and new, new opportunity, a new team. And same thing for us. We got to make sure that we were there and we get our season started off the right way. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for doing guys. this. Yeah, let me get in. <laughs> Good match. It's time for the decision of the week, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman. The Titans' decision to sign free agent wide receiver Calvin Ridley already looks like a good one. The veteran has brought speed, route running ability, and savvy to an already talented group. Calvin Ridley is hoping to rack up big numbers for the revamped Titans offense this season. The decision of the week brought to you by Hughes and Coleman, official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. When the Titans selected J.C. Latham in the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft, the team believed they had found their left tackle of the future. The 21-year-old Latham isn't just a massive person who has unusual athletic gifts. He is mature beyond his years and has a true drive to be great. As Amy Wells has observed over the last five months, J.C. Latham seems to be a perfect fit for the Tennessee Titans in every way. When J.C. Latham first set foot in the Titans facility, we should have known that something special was about to happen. You see, Latham's official pre-draft visit to Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park happened on the day of the solar eclipse. The planets, or at least the moon and the sun, quite literally aligned. I'm talking to um, Coach Callahan and you know, we had a 30 minute window to talk and next thing you know, it's been two hours. So luckily our, our meeting was right before lunch. So um, yeah, they were like, yeah, you kind of got to skip lunch and head over here because you, uh, you guys are talking all day. A meeting like that makes up for the fact that Latham didn't even get to see the eclipse, but he did get a peek into his future. One with position coach, Bill Callahan. And then you want to pick your whole arm. Yeah. When I strike it, it's that strike. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't, that's why you're sliding, Jason. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Callahan brings 
46 years of coaching experience to the Titans offensive line. So for Latham, a kid who moved from Wisconsin to Florida to attend IMG Academy and then played at Alabama, all in pursuit of facing the top competition, Bill Callahan is the perfect teacher. You know, you don't really get a lot of credit or, you know, kids call it like cool points, you know, for beating up the guys you're supposed to beat up. But when you go against the top dogs and all that stuff, that's when you really earn your um, right and respect. So, um, you know, Saban had a quote um, that he said a lot, uh, when a student is ready to learn, the teacher will appear. And I, I've been um, unintentionally following that my whole life, you know, whenever I felt like I was ready for the next phase, you know, the next journey would begin, whether it was IMG, Alabama, all that. So, um, yeah, I've always wanted to go against the best to be the best version of myself. Okay. Here. He's very, very um, intricate with the detail of the work, and he'll let you know if you if you had a bad rep, he'll just tell you your rep sucked. And then, um, but if you if you did if you did good, he'll let you know you did good. He'll show you areas to improve in, and um, you know he's really he's really intricate. Even in the meetings, you know, he'll show us um, the film and um, what it should look like, how it's supposed to be done. He'll talk to us about it, and then he'll even just grab random guys and be like, "Hey, all right, let me see you do this, do this, do that." All of that attention to detail is paying off. Coach Callahan already sees improvement in his new left tackle. He's built a little bit differently from a mental aspect from most first rounders that I've been around. He'll he'll always do the extra. He's always out here every day. He's uh, really obsessive about giving it, get everything correct. He's a perfectionist that way, so it's fun to watch him go back out on the field and correct something that he wants to get better at. He doesn't carry himself like a rookie, which is always a good thing. He spends a lot of time on this. I think he understands, which not all rookies understand, that it is a job. Um, and there's an expectation, especially when you're drafted where, you're, where he was drafted, that um, you got to come perform. And I think that he's, he's aware of that. Not everybody always is. And uh, he's got some maturity to him. But he also has a... Um, a youthful, a youthful wonder that's kind of fun to be around. He's everything's new to him. You know, there's just a lot, and he's and he just loves playing football. Great teachers create a solid foundation, but feeling truly comfortable in a place with the people you're working with, that's when the real magic happens. Did you ever uh, potentially with your, you know, uh, brand new draft rookie, run like a tackle screen? You know, utilize his speed and space, ability and space. Do you want to give everything away now? <laughs> I'm not going to say that, you know, my career is going to go smooth and I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z and, you know, seven Super Bowls off the bat, you know, but um, I know that I can't say that I'll give, you know, my maximum effort and seek out the best to be the best and um, handle adversity when it comes and be persistent. When Titans All Access continues, I sit down with new Titans slot receiver Tyler Boyd right here in the Bet MGM studio. The Nissan Insider is next. The Nissan Insider has been a staple of Titans All Access since the show began airing in 2003. These one-on-one -on -one interviews with Titans players give fans the chance to see their heroes in a different, more revealing light. In this Nissan Insider, we are introducing you to Titans slot receiver Tyler Boyd. Boyd spent eight years with the Cincinnati Bengals before finding a new home in Nashville with his former Bengals offensive coordinator, Brian Callahan. You are from Clareton, Pennsylvania. You lose your first game in high school, and then you never lose again. 63 straight wins. What is that like to win 63 straight games? Uh, man, it was remarkable. You know, it's kind of uh, mind-blowing, you know, but just coming up out the environment in the city I was raised in, you know, it was poverty crazy, you know, and um, it was probably about 20 people on the football team, 25 people. And uh, I think we just powered ourselves to just get outside each and every day and just get better at sports overall, not just football, but just uh, lean on each other and just hold each other accountable to uh, be great, you know, so everybody already didn't think we can do it. So it just felt like every game we had to prove something. What have you carried from that high school experience winning in that way towards an NFL career that's lasted nearly a decade now? I want to say just that that dog in me, you know, it's just, just that it factor that I have, you know, going into anything that's competitive, you know, because uh, like you said, since day one, since high school, since Little League, you know, I always had it in my mind that uh, I couldn't be beat, 
You know, that I always wanted to beat the person in front of me, regardless how hard I had to work to get there or what tactics I had to use, you know, I always found a way to try to uh, win my, my matchups. So you go to the pros. You're drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals in 2016. And you, you find a role for yourself almost right away, and it's a role you've crafted throughout your career. You can play outside, but you've played the slot and you've become an expert at that. Does that background from having to, had to do everything in high school and then having to learn your way in college given you the ability to sort of say, this is my job, I'll do it, I'll be one of the best at it? That's how I kind of started, you know, where I just fit into whatever you need me to do. You know, like you mentioned, I can play all anywhere on the field, you know, but I just at the time when I came into uh, Cincinnati, we already had AJ, we had Brandon LaFell, you know, so that was kind of my only position I could kind of come in and start and make an impact on. So I had experience in it in college and just um, just flourished, man, and just, just I always just had a great feel for football, you know, being there when the quarterback uh, didn't see anybody open. What was your first impression when you met Brian Callahan when he joined the Cincinnati staff? Uh, he was just very calm, very chill, very settled. I could just tell he wasn't an emotional guy. He wasn't a, like a blue collar, aggressive type of a guy. He was just somebody that you can kind of go to and just talk football with or, or vent to. You know, he just gave that off. Just in his body language, he was just easy to just talk to. So it just allows the players to just sink into whatever coaches uh, telling you to do and you'll just buy in at that point. Have guys been hitting you up for intel on Brian Callahan trying to say, what do I stay away from? What do I need to do more of? What do, what sets him off? Things like that. Yeah, it's so crazy you said that because exactly what I said. They said the same thing. Like he's very cool. He's down to earth. You still gotta go out there and do the right things, you know, before you can t continue to build on to the relationship, you know. Because at the end of the day, he's the head coach. He's trying to do his job. You know, he's gonna yell sometimes. He's gonna get, you know, emotional. He's gonna he's gonna you know spontaneous get different feelings, you know. So um just. Being able to be coachable at the same time and be able to take criticism, I think it goes a long way with the relationship. When Titans All Access continues, it's time to go beneath the surface powered by Microsoft Surface. Coach Dave McGinnis has his eye on new Titan center Lloyd Cushenberry, and trust me, you don't want to miss it. Brunskill is the fullback. Give Pollard ramming forward at right guard. Let me tell you what that is. Touchdown, Titans! That was jumbo, jumbo, jumbo for a big six. Okay, maybe I got a little excited. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But <laughs> here's a segue. My broadcast partner, Dave McGinnis, was just as excited as he watched new Titans center Lloyd Cushenberry at work during a recent practice. We invite you to see for yourself in this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Bill Callahan is, is about precision, he's about repetition, and he's about detail. Today, we're gonna to focus on Lloyd Cushenberry, the free agent center. That was a huge addition to this offensive line. The center is the hub of the spokes of the offensive line. Everything emanates off of the center. And so having a, a veteran center that is as skilled as Cushenberry is gonna help in a lot of ways. With a young offensive line, I mean, he's got young linemen to his left and he'll have young linemen to his right. So this was a huge get by Rand Carthon. Repetition means nothing unless it's quality repetition. They're, they're working on being able to have a flat back, get extension, and also bring their hips with their arms. In other words, they can't be extended out, leave their feet behind them. You can see everything, it, it works. It, it works from the bottom up in every position. The offensive line, that's what he starts out with right here. Things get really hectic at the line of scrimmage during a ball game, really hectic. And so you've got to be able to have fundamentals that you can lean on when it really gets heated. And it's going to get heated pretty quick now. All right, here's Lloyd Cushenberry. Lloyd Cushenberry, watch it. Look at Lloyd Cushenberry. Look at, look at the power underneath. Look at the balance. I mean, that was picture perfect. That's textbook. I hope we're getting this on film. That's really, really, I mean, excellent. I mean, I know Bill Callahan doesn't care what I think about it, but I'm just telling you, he's got very good eyes. And by that, I mean, he can see. He can see things, he can anticipate. I mean, you have to be able to have that in the middle of an offensive line. They want to work their upper body to be able to 
to get everything in sync, working upwards, working upwards. Now by doing this, he gives them the feel from the waist up as to how it should feel on contact. He is basically the quarterback of the front. Exactly. And, and he works in conjunction with the quarterback, but there's so much that goes on pre-snap that people don't even understand the game within the game from tackle to tackle. Absolutely. And, and, and having a veteran center that can, that can recognize and can, and, and can emote quickly changes on the run is all the great teams I've been around, the ones that you were on, always had a center that could do that. Absolutely. And then everybody else believed and followed it. Offensive line play is about communicating, and that communication starts with the guy that has his hand on the ball first, and that's the center. And there you go. I fully expect Coach Mack to bring that same sort of energy this Sunday in Chicago. He will. It's in his contract. Oh, that's good. Perfect. Coach Mack <laughs> joins Amy, me, and the entire Titans radio team this Sunday for the season opener at Soldier Field. Titans Bears this Sunday from Chicago. Titans Countdown hits the air at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern on Titans radio stations throughout the region. We hope that you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.